Hey, what's up? Thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Star Wars Episode Nine loses its director, while Warner Brothers and Fox hires directors. War for Planet of the Apes makes an Oscar push. We got the Inhumans box office and reception of its IMAX release. And yes, it's finally happened. We've joined the rest of the world and you'll hear us geek out about the first season of Game of Thrones like it's 2011. All that and more all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, September 7th, 2017. Hey, what's up? It's Taylor Gray, the voice of Ezra Bridger on Star Wars Rebels, and you're listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. Jock and Nerd. Hey, 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 welcome, listener, welcome, friend, welcome to another Geerific. episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And he's the rug boy. What's up, rugs? What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's got <laughs> Did a, I do it good? He's, I don't know. That was a... a li- it wasn't a... Sm- that, okay, that's better. You got to roll... Anthony, you give me... Give me a brap, Anthony. Brap. Yeah, he doesn't better. This is the, the shout out to Mike Rips. Mike Rips intro edition. <laughs> he changed the show forever. Remix. Mike Rips remix. Uh, he's changed the show Speak, forever. Yeah. He should do a theme song for us because I'm getting tired of our theme song. We should. You should. We should get a legit Mike Rips uh, send up. That, you know what? I meant to ask him when he was on the show and I forgot. But I'll reach Dude, out to him. I'll be like, bro. All you listeners, tweet him. Yes. And campaign. He'll do it. At Mike Rips. Uh, well, let's get in touch with him. Send us some fat beats. My grips, and uh, we'll plug your shit. Welcome, if you are a new listener. This is the show. If you go to our website, jockander.com, there's a tagline on there that Anthony hates, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. Which one? <laughs> something about curating, curators, something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a stupid one. Right? It's a little douchey now Now that I look at it, and I will change it. I think a better tagline is uh, comic book and superhero-related news reviews and interviews every week. That's what you get here, and that's what you're going to get. In this show, we got some geek news. Uh, we got some directors fired, some directors hired, uh, a bunch of other crazy stuff. And then in the second half, listener, and if you're a regular listener, this is weird for me to say, we will be talking about the Game of Thrones. Oh, shit. Season one thoughts, since that's as far as I am. But this is the era of uh, Game of Thrones on the Jock and Nerd podcast. Welcome to 2010. <laughs> Only six years late. We'll be talking about it. But this is, and there's people coming with us on the journey. We'll get to that. It's going to be very exciting. I'm actually really excited to talk about it, believe We're it or not. We're finally able to <laughs> We've talk ca- about Game of Thrones. <laughs> We've caught up with the rest of pop culture. Huzzah. You were freaking out about the fact that we were gonna we were forcing people to now listen to watch Game of Thrones yes. and know what we're talking about, yes. but that was a, a stupid thing that we won't get into, um, because you just like to freak out about yes. stupid you shit. Are correct, but I think people will actually enjoy hearing what we have to think about it in like in bigger chunks rather than episode by episode. So I think it'll actually be good. This is what I think. I think I. It's been a while since I've watched those shows. Uh-huh. It's been t- it's been like years. Okay, so kind of reliving it with you is kind of refreshing my memories and and knowing that we have like a year until the next season yes. comes on, like maybe it'll pad out through the year yes. while you guys are catching up and it'll, it'll get me caught up again and it'll kind of make me fresh for the, the last season. Well, and that's what that's what the intent is. We're going to try to get caught up in the next 14 months so we can experience the last season with everyone real time. Yeah, you should be like we're ramping up for the, the the last season. We're gonna relive all your favorite Game of Thrones incest moments. I and despite the fact that <laughs> incest is best, look, despite the fact there's hundreds of Game of Thrones podcasts, hundreds of podcasts to talk about them. I guarantee what you're gonna get from us is a take that you're not gonna get from anyone else because we have crazy weird personalities. Our observations, mine at least, I'm not a normal person. Uh, they're not normal observations. So that should be entertaining at the very least. Okay. 
But first, but first, <laughs> before we get to the news, real quick, I just I got a shout out to our listeners in uh, these weather affected areas of the country in these past couple of weeks because I know we got listeners in Florida and on the East Coast in Texas on the West Coast. I mean, if you haven't been following, it's the craziest thing where uh, on the east side of the country, there are people trying to get gallons, millions of gallons of water out of their house, out of their street. While on the other side of the country, they are dousing their house with water because there's hundreds of wildfires all across Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, California. And I know we have listeners and podcasters, friends in all these places, and, and you guys stay safe, stay strong. Uh, a recent guy, J.R. Flamond, who's a listener, who's been started interacting on our, our Facebook group, which is great. We're really getting to know him. Uh, he lives in Montana. He actually, he rented an RV and he watched the eclipse, like, in the on the outside band of totality. But he's posted photos of, like, the, you know, the smoke in the air, and there's ash on his car, and it's it's just crazy what's going on right now. It's called nature, Imran. Yeah, but Irma, look, this, <laughs> nature has never been this bad. And if there's climate deniers out there, like, this is a direct result of us fucking with the environment. Irma is the largest recorded hurricane in the Atlantic ever since right. they started recording. And the reason is that the water is so warm uh, yeah. uh, that we they've never had a hurricane this big. Like, it dwarfs Andrew that caused a lot of damage. I was just looking at the pictures. So... Batten down the hatches, you guys out there. It's good. It'll... It's going to be a fucking weird ride. Yeah. I know people that live down there. Yep. I mean, everybody knows people yep. live yep. there. Yep. If you're yep. from the East Coast, yep. everybody, all old people go down there. Like everybody who like retires, they grow and retire down yeah. there. Yeah. And like not so. to be so America centric, you can't forget like uh, Puerto Rico and Antigua and that one Ber- Bermuda or Berboda that just got not that wiped one. Out. There's a bunch There's tons of, of them. All those there Haiti is going to get hit. Destroyed. Yeah, Puerto Rico is supposed to supposed to be getting hit really and hard. You know too. what's the craziest thing? Like, where are you supposed to evacuate to if you're on those islands? There's nowhere to go. You can't nah. like if you're in the in in the states, you can at least drive drive away north. You, you can't go anywhere on those islands. I really feel for those people. So, everyone, just stay safe and let and hopefully one, one service we can provide is that we, you listen to our insane bullshit about things that don't matter and it's entertaining and we make you I laugh. Mean, kind of take your mind off it. I think what I would do if I was on one of those islands, yeah, is I would get the fuck away from the coast and go as far centrally inland as possible. Inland and like underground, if possible. The only problem is a lot of those islands are so goddamn small. There's inland means nothing. Well, you can't go underground. The water will flood you. Yeah, inland. No. Yeah, there's nowhere to run. I mean, the the size of this Hurricane Irma, the, the diameter from one side to the other is yes. the diameter from Tallahassee to dude. It's the um, size of Florida. Uh, Tallahassee yeah. to, to Miami. It's yeah. the it's 400 miles. It's the whole length of Florida. It's insane. It's yeah. fucking crazy. Stay safe. Let's make you laugh a little bit. Let's get to the news. Doc and Nerd Podcast. Listener, if you want to get in touch with the show, visit jogandnerd.com slash contact. You'll find links to our Twitter account, our Facebook page, and our awesome Facebook group where I pull a lot of stuff for the show. And I got a lot of comments uh, and a lot of shout outs from the Facebook group. You guys are great. It's really cool getting to know so many people's names and then seeing everybody interact. It's awesome. Uh, so jockandnerd.com slash contact. Shut up, Imran. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's start with uh, the big news uh, that kind of dropped this week. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Lucasfilm is starting to look a lot like DC Warner Brothers. Uh, Colin Trevorrow out as Star Wars Episode Nine director. Oh, shit. From the Hollywood Reporter. Here's the official Lucasfilm statement. Lucasfilm and Colin Trevorrow have mutually chosen to part ways on Star Wars Episode Nine. Colin has been a wonderful collaborator throughout the development process, but we have all come to the conclusion that our visions for the project differ. We wish Colin the best and we'll be sharing more information about the film soon. Let me just ask you this from that comment, guys. Does it sound mutual or does it sound like he got fired? No, he definitely got fired. Yeah, this is the old uh, creative differences, quote that's unquote. Been a, that's been bullshit. Apparently, rumors that Trevor's departure have dogged the project since early June, weeks before the opening of the Book of Henry, his thriller that was panned by critics, failed at the box office. Who does that remind you of? A little bit. 
uh, Josh Trank. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that script issues have continued to be a sore spot throughout episode nine's development, with Trevor having repeated stabs at multiple drafts. Uh, in August, Jack Thorne, the British scribe who wrote the upcoming Julia Roberts' Jacob Tremblay movie Wonder, was tapped to work on the script. Sources also say that working relationship between Trevor and Lucasfilm head Kathleen Kennedy became That's not good. unmanageable. You know, I don't, she already fired Lord and Miller way late into production, I think. She wanted to not go through that again. So she fired her before they shot anything. Before they shot everything, but so soon after firing Phil Lord and Chris Miller and replacing them with Ron uh, Howard. Listen, uh, yeah. if you watch Jurassic World, yes, it's a lot of style and no substance. Exactly, and the fact that that movie made, uh, what, a billion dollars really because is... Because people love dinosaurs. Yes, it's the brand. It wasn't him. Yeah. He had nothing to do with it. It's just yeah. it, it Jurassic was a, it World. It was a huge nostalgic yes. kick for people. Yes, like Beauty and the Beast made a billion, same way Jurassic World made, or part, or world. I mean, it wasn't a total shit movie Was it, that it was entertaining. It just, you were watching and going, they could have made a much better movie. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it was nothing special in terms of story and uh, uh, the quality of effects were great. And the, 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 the talent that they hired, the the stars of the movie were great. It's just that the script and what happens during the movie was kind of like asinine. Right. Yep. And you don't want Star Wars doesn't want that shit happening in their movies where you're like, this movie's completely asinine. And um, they everybody's getting so much more analytical with these movies, so much more critical. So many more people are talking about these movies and. I think that they're kind of hedging their bets a little bit. They're like being a little bit more uh, careful. I'm surprised that he doesn't just stay to direct because I guess he was writing and directing. They got another writer. He could have still directed it, but they just uh, cut him, cut him loose. Well, I think it's a good move. I think I, I would agree. I'm not the big Star Wars guy, but he only the only reason he got the gig was because Jurassic World did so well, well uh, critic or uh, financially. Um, and they were like, well, he can cr- direct a billion dollar movie. He can handle Star Wars. And like Rugboy, I didn't think Jurassic World, I yeah. thought it was popcorn fun, but I didn't think there was any, I didn't think it was actually all that great of a movie either. So I'm cool with this. So this is the issue. Like, why does this keep happening? This is the fourth time directors have been replaced on a Star Wars project. Tony Gilroy takes over from Gareth Edwards for massive reshoots on Rogue One. Josh Trank taking off a Star Wars film way before any, they get anywhere near to production. The reason why this is mess. happening. Yes. All right. I'll tell you why it's happening. Because Disney took over Star Wars and they want to make as many movies as possible. All right. So they're, they can't wait for a director that they trust to be available. They have to hire other people. And they're taking a lot of chances on these people. And then they're, uh, they, they've been burned by his Han Solo directors uh, fucking up. They, you know, yep, even, yep. even Gareth, Gareth Edwards it start, yeah, had, had, it started a, had a rough time. So um, because they're kind of like want to pump out all these movies like Marvel does, like a few a year. Yeah. Like that's not what Star Wars brand is. Like, they make a movie, and then you wait three years, and another movie comes out. They're trying to increase production. The thing is, this so that's, was... That, that's a balancing act that I, I don't think that, uh, in terms of quality, if you want to have quality control over your brand, that's a tough thing to do. And you got to put it in different people's hands, all of these movies. Like, all of these movies almost has to have to be in production almost at the same time. Like, like pre-production has to be going on while these people are wrapping up the other movie. And it's just, it's a train. You need a bunch of talent, a bunch of directors to be doing all this shit. Or you need a couple of good ones to do everything. Look, what happened to the thing? Didn't they say they were going for young directors who kind of grew up with these movies to give a fresh take on the Star Wars franchise and universe? No, that's and, bullshit. And that was, that's not what they wanted. That's clearly. No, they want to control they, their brand. Yeah. They don't want it to be fucked up. So. They, you know, they hired, go back and hire Lawrence Kasdan to, you know, to write Han Solo. And then and, and then when Phil Lord and Chris Miller don't shoot the script, you know, they're going to be upset. Uh, what? Who should direct? There are rumors already. Possible replacements. Rian Johnson, who his his case is like the only one that's kind of worked out. Apparently, yeah. he's been given a lot of free reign. He is one of these young up-and-comers that had a few movies, kind of an indie guy. These are all like these indie guys that they're really putting a lot of a uh, lot of stuff on that haven't been able to deliver. His- and yeah. also, um, 
I believe Rian Johnson has a little bit of writing credit, or he's been involved at least in some of the story prop line for the next one too. Oh, for the next one. Okay, so that would make sense to tie it together. And also, they've uh, J.J. Abrams has been mentioned returning. What do you guys think? Well, any any the, any preferences? List the, list the directors that birth movies death from a birth movies. So you've death. got let's say let's say you got Rian Johnson. You can say J.J. Abrams. There's been a push, which was. In my in my opinion, mind bogglingly dumb, which was bring back George Lucas. Yeah, I saw that. There's a petition. <laughs> no. no, that's the last thing. That, I don't no. know anything about Star Wars, <laughs> that, but I know that's a bad idea. That's literally going in the opposite <laughs> direction that you want to go. Uh, Ryan Coogler. But, Ryan Coogler, that'd be cool. Not a bad pick. Uh, Ava DuVernay, a woman. I was like, what? What about some women? And they have women that's in here. That's the popular choice on Twitter. Uh, Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. Would be a good one, uh, Ron Howard. Ron Howard, which is this like a safe one, but you know, would yeah, he be would able be to? Yeah, that would be a safe bet right there. And then, and then Ryan, and, and then Ryan Johnson. And he, t- Ryan Johnson's tweeted yeah. July nineteenth, two thousand seventeen. I would do another Star Wars movie in a heartbeat. I've had the time of my life. See, part of me thinks like the main episode movies should maybe kind of be done by the same creative talent to keep it. Uh, all together and to keep the continuity going and, and, and keep it tied together. And then you get, you get indie guys, but uh, I don't, I, it's not working with them to do the in-between movies. The solo. I think they're just spreading themselves too thin. They're just too kinda, much too fast. Yeah. It doesn't need to be that for star Wars. I mean, I know they're trying to branch it out, but hmm. I mean, how many people think that rogue one is their favorite star Wars movie? I mean, it was a good, I, I movie. enjoyed rogue one. It was a good, it was a good movie. movie. I enjoyed Rogue One more than I enjoyed The Force Awakens. I, but The Force Awakens was, a, a, from what I gathered, a big nostalgia play. Yeah. yeah. So, and I didn't understand a lot of that. Whereas Rogue One, I felt like I could watch independently. Yeah. You know, despite this, despite that 50% of the directors, some new films have been replaced, four out of six movies. What they Kath- have- Hey, but it's Kathleen Kennedy, too. It's Kathleen gotta, she, Kennedy. So- she is basically the Kevin Feige of Star Wars. Yes, right she's now. the quality control. And what they've given us so far have been solid. It hasn't happened what's happened over at Warner Brothers DC. So. Well, there's a little bit of a comparison, but I still have trust in them. And maybe she learned her lesson from the Phil Lord, Chris Miller. And she's like, you know what? I'm not going to wait, uh, you know, uh, five let, months. Let, into let me reshapes. pose this question. Yeah. Is we're so we're, the the prequel tri- uh, trilogy. Yes. Those were considered not great, right? Correct. And they were all Lucas. I think all directed they by him? were. It's a good question. I'm sure the first so, one was. Well, the, the prequels are all Lucas. It was all, all Lucas. Lucas. So, yeah. So I'm, my speculation is Kathleen Kennedy is like, we don't ever want to get back to that level. So I will do whatever it takes so that we don't get that back to See, that the level. Thing is, but the thing is with um, Lucas is that he just hired bad actors. Or either mm-hmm. that or he couldn't get a good performance out of these people. But, I mean, the people who he hired were just terrible. The only person that was even decent was, like, you know, uh, Natalie Portman. Even she, even she was bad. Like, I don't – he couldn't get a good performance out like of You like Ewan McGregor? Well, a lot of that, though, was McGregor directing, was though. Good. He was good. Dire- right. Directors have a lot of say in, in who they yeah. hire as, as actors and performance. But, I mean, like, Ewan McGregor was good and uh, Liam Neeson was good in them and everything like that. But the main guy who played – Anakin was terrible. He was yes. the worst actor that ever lived. Hayden Christensen, very wooden, yeah. stiff. But Mark Hamill in the original movies, a little whiny. Not the best actor also. like he's... Yeah, but that for its time yeah. was like normal. Like, mean, we, we have now gone to a certain level of even TV shows have this great acting in it. I mean, to me, so, where Lucas failed in the prequels was he did everything green screen digital. It gave it a kind of a really fake feel. And he got way too into like the, the, the Senate and the politics and all that fucking boring shit. Uh, to, in the first one, yeah. 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 Although I do like seeing uh, Anakin become Darth Vader, something I've been waiting my whole life to see. And that was still I'll, pretty I'll great. Say, I'll say this as well. I agree with Rugboy. And I'll add that a lot of people point to the Marvel model and want to do it that way. And what we're kind of seeing with how DC and like X Men and Sony and even like the MonsterVerse or the the horror Universal monsters and now Star Wars is just because you're able to throw movies out every year yeah. doesn't mean it's easy doesn't to mean, do that. Yes, yes, it doesn't mean you're they've get got quality. they've got movies. I'm looking at what Kathleen Kennedy's producing. I mean, yeah. she's got a movie scheduled for every year up until 2020. That's a Star Wars for movie. Star Wars, right? It's yeah. very strange because this is a product oriented kind of filmmaking 
And it's not like artistically oriented. So all of these directors and all these writers want to write and they want to direct and they want to do things that are artistic. They get too artsy. And, and uh, they're like, no, this is my product. Yeah. We want to we want to protect our brand. This is our product. We need to think. So it's kind of a whole different kind of filmmaking. And it, it's a different way of going about things. And it's very hard to like quality control this type of stuff when you're doing product first filmmaking. Less artsy, more fartsy. That's what it needs. Right, Rex? Well, it's just, it takes a lot of fun out of making movies. That's all. Well, it's also it's also directors. I think I said this with uh, Lord, Lord and Miller in, in that you got to learn when you're doing a product or a brand like mm-hmm. this, you got to learn to play in the sandbox. It's yeah. corporate filmmaking. I don't like that term at all because every movie is corporate. I guess. <laughs> it's <laughs> movies are all expensive. By they're, committee, they're, if anything, though, then. It's more the, it's more the you have to be able to juggle personalities yeah. and juggle egos and still have be okay with either your product being a little different than what you intended or you can please enough people that you can get what you want out there and you have to play the game it's similar to like in the art world like you can sit at home make your own comic book put it out or you know you can work for a creative agency where you have clients and that you have to deliver things they're expecting but also don't lose your soul well, and not make it you know completely sanitary and safe well, at the end of the day I mean it is art but yeah. it's different in that art you don't have as many masters please this is a billion well, dollar project you take a quentin tarantino movie like kill bill that's a piece of art mm-hmm. all right that is a superhero movie made by a guy who yes. doesn't have to listen to fucking anyone yes all right he does whatever he wants the girl can do whatever she wants she fucking kills a million guys hand severed whatever any kind of dialogue that you want as misogynistic the pussy wagon anything that he, anything goes <laughs> yep and uh, these are products, yeah. and we're going to get a lot more of like a watered-down, safe approach. And that's what's going on with all of these Star Wars movies. Yeah. I think that they wanted Han Solo to be funny, but now they want to like take, they want to tone it down a little bit. So they're 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 kind of worried about that. Well, Imran, yeah, just to kind of pull coals in the, it's a corporate movie, even like something like Kill Bill, yeah, current Quentin Tarantino, distributed by Miramax Films, yeah. At, at the time was owned by Walt Disney. Oh, snap. Miramax was owned by Disney <laughs> so at the time. Everything is corporate, man. Holy you shit. can't you can't be like this is a corporate film. That's a good point. It is more of a product though of a, of an established brand. It makes it tough. Yeah, it's it's I mean, I don't I don't I don't I'm not crying because of this though. I don't think Trevor is that good no. of a director anyways. No, no, I think again, I, th- I agree with you guys. I think this is a, a good thing and uh it would be interesting to see it, who it's, gets it's the, the job. only thing that's gonna be kind of shitty in my opinion is they have their schedule, so whoever comes in is going to be now run it, trying to catch up. As yeah, fast well, as possible. they're going to need like a Ron Howard trying to type guy. Holes in a sinking ship. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, uh, apparently Ron Howard's having fun doing that on Han Solo. He's always tweeting photos, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that comes out. But at least they didn't already start shooting the most of the movie, <laughs> and we're you know almost done shooting when this happened. So. Ah, that's crazy. Okay, moving on. Last week, we had talked about the news that uh, Warner Brothers wants to do a, a Joker origin movie uh, by Todd Phillips and produced by Martin Scorsese. And I was like, Whoa, what the fuck? Why Martin Scorsese? Uh, why would he? Wa- why would they want him? And this may be why. Uh, Sources say, this is from Hollywood Reporter, sources say Warners will make an ambitious attempt to use Scorsese to bring Leonardo DiCaprio into the world of comic book movies. Uh, Leo as the Joker, guys, what do you think? This is kind of exciting. Scorsese and Leo, Joker movie, holy shit. I mean, if Leonardo DiCaprio gets in shape for this thing, and uh, I think he could fucking be amazing at this. Oh my god! I, I, do you think he wants to do a superhero movie? I've done a complete one eighty. Well, yeah. not a complete one because I actually thought it could be good. Yeah, but yeah, if he Leo does it, I'm. Let's fucking go. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Jared Leo. I, I mean, fuck the continuity. Let's just yeah. let him do it. I, just I make don't even it. Care if it's good. I just want to yeah. see what he does. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like, who cares and, if it, it connects to the DCEU at that point? Let's just go. Like, wouldn't you want to see a Leo Joker? Yes. Oh like, my god. He's a fucking. He's a fucking maniac. That guy. He he's, would be a, great. He's, a, he's a goddamn fantastic actor. Yeah, he's a maniac. Like he'll do. He'll like. Be, he'll actually become the Joker and start killing people. 
My favorite. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I can kind of see like, like that method. He he'll, he'll, he'll like go to Thailand, get a kid, and like torture him to yes. death. Yes, and like beat him with a with a with crowbar just to see what it feels like. I mean, you can kind of see that psychopathic side of him when he's in the Django and Chain. Django and Chain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The D I mean, is that, silent, Anthony. I know the D is silent. My bad. I'm like the kid from Growing Pains wants to be the Joker. Oh, that's crazy. Look, this is really. No, I'm kidding. That's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but look, here's the thing. It's all talk. There's no offer for yeah. DiCaprio. There's the the deal to produce in Scorsese isn't even done yet. This could be slim to none. But I've seen some fan art already. Wasn't Leto pissed about this? Wait, there's He's fan con- art. What people have made? Yeah, just Google. People have made fan art of Leo as the Joker, and it looks. Sick. Jared Leto said something about this is very confusing. He still has, you know, the other movie and uh, uh, Suicide Squad 2, which we'll, well he, get he's into. He's also pissed because he got into this thinking he'd be the right. this generation's Joker. Right. And he's like, wait a minute. And now they're like, well, you have a Joker, what? you assholes, yeah. but you can't fuck with Scorsese DiCaprio combination. Oh, my God. I mean, I think even Jared Leto will be like, yeah, you know what? I kind of want to see this. Uh, that's fine. So uh, uh, I don't know if he, I don't think he's going to want to see that. No, I think he's got a huge ego. He's going to be so pissed. When he's uh, there's nothing about Jared Leto that's ever screamed there's to me. There's no humble. good photoshops of this. What the fuck? I are you saw talking about? something somewhere. I'll find it, it looks, later. They, there is a Photoshop, but it it's looks like a five year old did it. No, that's not the one. I swear I saw something really cool. Oh, OK, maybe. I was right, go fuck yourself, Emron. mistaken. Go fuck yourself, everybody. That's what you get for making me Google something. Sorry. Sorry. Make your fel- hard is for me to type. I know your felty hands. It takes forever. Look, yeah. Star Wars uh, lost the director, but we have a, 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 the reverse happening at the DCEU. They have gained a director for a movie that I don't know if anybody actually wants. Uh, Suicide Squad 2. Warner Brothers in DC have chosen Gavin O'Connor. To direct the sequel. And what did he direct? That will bring back Will Smith and all the, the others. Accountant. He has done oh. the accountant. Now, the accountant is actually a decent movie, but it's forgettable. Isn't that weird? I kind of want to see it. Ben Affleck looks badass. I keep seeing it pop up on the HBO. They're working on a sequel uh, right now with him for it. Like I remember liking it when I was watching it, but I don't remember it at all. It's just like, why does the accountant have a ma- machine He had gun? strobe lights in his room. <laughs> and like a weird. Yeah, it was really crazy. Uh, so apparently O'Connor had come in and pitched his vision of the movie, and he will write that with the scripting partner, Anthony Tambakis. All right. He's so, got potential. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, maybe he can make a better movie. Uh, I don't know why. I hope so. <laughs> but, I mean, I know why they're making a sequel. It made a lot of it money. made a shit ton of money. But I don't think uh, people who saw this movie were like, you know what? I want to see another one. Uh, bring, give me another one. You know, I get the feeling that, I mean, I, it, it's a bad movie. Yeah. But I get the feeling that although it was a bad movie, it didn't cause the the amount of hate that BVS did. No, that's true. I think I think a lot of people walked into that movie and walked out and were like, eh, eh. okay. Yeah, yeah, it was more a meh because it wasn't established characters. They it was weren't bad. like huge. No, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a bad movie. It's but a bad movie. I think the, most of the general public thought it was okay. The bad guy was so lame. Yeah. You know, that was upsetting. But the actual... I think the MacGuffin was more like getting all these people together as a team. And that was the interesting thing to watch. Yeah. So, I mean, there's potential. 50% of that movie was okay in that respect, yeah. but yeah. the rest of it was ga- hot garbage. <laughs> and there's so much like potential there. And maybe now that they set these dudes up, you can finally just jump in and give us something meatier uh, and have a. Uh, I mean, it was fun. I don't know. Will it's Smith weird. isn't going to be in it, is he? I, it yeah. says so the all... sequel will bring back Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Jared Leto, and, and Jared the rest Leto. of the gang. So there's what, he there's a the, he's he's going to be the Joker in an, in a number of movies, at least two. But then there's going to be other Jokers. He's going to keep getting cut out of every <laughs> he's movie. Just yeah. gonna, yes, he's going to keep spending all that money on used condoms, <laughs> sending it to people, and then he have his role cut in half. And some, somebody's going to pay to the for point the, where it dude, doesn't make any sense why he's even Jared in the movie. Jared Leto needs to show up and like. And be a team player he's instead just, of being a dick. He's got to pay for those dead rats he likes to send his cast. Uh, yeah, you know, he can't do like shit like Everything I've dick. seen on Jared Leto, I, I, I think he's just a complete douchebag. I don't think DiCaprio would approach this role the same way. Let's just say that. We're never going to see DiCaprio as the Joker, now that I think about it. But wow, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, another movie that has a director. This time, it's a Marvel movie from Fox. It's X-Force. Directing X-Force, Fox has got Drew Goddard. To write and direct. Oh, X Force. That name plenty of times. Yeah, Drew Goddard from uh, Daredevil and The Martian. 
Oh, he wrote The Martian, and he was gonna direct The Martian, but then he he was he was supposed to do uh, I think the Secret Six movie too. That, that's the Six. funny thing. He was set to write and direct The Martian. He writes it and then leaves for the Sinister Six, and uh, Ridley Scott gets The Martian. Sinister Six never gets made. The Martian side tangent, great movie. Like every time it's on, I watch it's, it. Very it's rewatchable. Good movie. Yeah, great. Matt, Matt Damon. Also, uh, you're forgetting about uh, Daredevil, Cabin in the Woods. Oh, and Cabin in the Woods, and uh, he or dark comedy. The uh, this, the X Force movie is going to revolve around Deadpool and Cable leading a Black Ops force of down and dirty mutant warriors who are far more ruthless than their X Men counterparts. I uh, got Cyan Kimberg, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, Lauren Shooter, Donner producing. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we know they said also the Deadpool will be and Cable will be in X Force. So that's exciting. I think that could be fun. Uh, it, it could be fun if they make it fun. If they make it fun, no, he's a he's a he's a good catch, and this could be kind of like the dark, the dark mutant team up kind of thing. I, it's piqued my interest, right? You know what I mean? Like he seems like a decent pick. So let's see. I want to see him do a a, a big budget movie. Let's see what happens. Uh, also, another X movie related news: Josh Boone has wrapped production and shooting on New Mutants, and they have wrapped David Leach wrapped on Deadpool too. So I, I forgot that New Mutants was even happening. New Mutants is still coming, and then there's still there's that there's those two. There's X Force, and then X Men Dark Phoenix. Also, that's gonna be directed by Starred by Kimber. Santa. Starred by Santa Stark and Sophie <laughs> Turner uh, about a character we didn't get to know, so nobody's gonna care when she freaks out and goes Phoenix because we don't even know her because you didn't bother to let us get to know her. Yay! Boo. Yay! Uh, so. You guys remember we talked about Wonder Woman trying to make an Oscar push like they're trying oh, to yeah. trying to get it to uh, push for best picture whether it deserves it or not that's that's crazy it would be cool to see a superhero movie well another movie that actually does deserve it and is making a push War for the Planet of the Apes uh, per deadline, Fox is mounting a serious push, hoping not only to land Oscar nominations, but also aiming for those all important precursors like a nomination or award from a critic scoop or one of the guilds to get things rolling. There may even be a concerted effort to get Andy Serkis a special achievement award as the actor has been at the center of acclaim slash controversy for every one of these apes movies. Uh, this is from Collider. On the one hand, his performance is incredible, but on the other hand, in the industry, many in the industry are dubious of the blurred line between performance and technology, otherwise known as a motion capture. Uh, so they're also going to try to get, you know, production design, cinematography, costumes, music, the usual, which I think it, it'll get some of those. But this Andy Circus thing is really exciting. I hope they recognize this somehow, some way this year at the Oscars. What do you guys think? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, they should, right? I, this, I, unlike Wonder Woman, I hate to bash another yeah. movie to yeah. praise one, but unlike Wonder Woman, I think this movie does deserve some sort of Oscar nomination. Not Best Picture, per se, but some of the other stuff. Yeah, and I guess... They need, they, there needs to be some sort of acknowledgement yeah. from the uh, Academy that yeah. what they're doing here is fucking amazing. This is a new yeah. thing. It's been around. I guess they've tried to get him Best Actor nominations in the past, and it's never worked. No. no it's now or never. So this is it. So they're going to have to like make a new... I just think the best bet is to to do a new category or some kind of lifetime achievement, special achievement in, in, in a new... In a new category because this is the the technology is changing so fast every year. They really need to adapt. Right. <laughs> the the the, uh, the academy needs to adapt. It's all I mean, I I guess there's younger people and there's a wider base of people who vote on these things now. Well, the breadth of movies, the kinds of movies that are being made, and the fact that they're being made with this amount of care and quality and acting and all that stuff has to be acknowledged in some way. Yeah, and it's going to come from the people. So it says in this Collider article, there's also new diversity of the Academy to consider. Nearly a quarter of the Academy makeup consists of new voters since 2015. And these professionals are younger and more diverse than your traditional Academy members. That, that is hopeful. Like that, I think, is the start this, that change. This article is pretty good. I like the, the yeah. point at the end. I'll just read it. Yeah. Um, Even if you don't love the film, it's hard not to admire the commitment to real drama, characters, and stakes over a needlessly complex plot, plot or flashy visuals that populate most blockbuster filmmaking nowadays. Reeves approached 
the film like an epic drama, not a product, and that mm-hmm. compassion shows, will the Academy respond in kind? And I mean, we said it in our review. It was the most amazing non blockbustery blockbuster, and the fucking special effects and the performance combined are so incredible and stunning. And you forget, you forget that these aren't real fucking things. Like it's so good. It, yeah. it needs to get Although something. being a product and being backed by corporate money. It's a corporate movie. It is a corporate movie. <laughs> they all are. But Reeves did a, I, I think had a, did a really good job in still trying to make a great film and not just a film to please the, the execs. But I think that it's a different level of, of corporate because Star Wars has got all this merchandising toys and Lego deals and shit like that. And this doesn't really have that same kind of corporate weight on it. Reeves could make but, a Star Wars movie, though. I think he could work in that system. Oh, yeah, he could. I think he'd be, he would be good. And he I, I don't see the... I don't think the story itself was all that revolutionary. I thought it was really good. But I, I do think the the filmmaking process of this has to be acknowledged. These these three movies, almost as a... Just a, a little bow on top of these three movies. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. It would mean there's some justice. I, I completely agree. In the Oscars, let's see how that plays out for them. Come Oscar time. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to something really, really bad. <laughs> oh, shit. The Inhumans did premiere in IMAX for a week. And listener, Wait, yeah, last week you said yes. you would try and go and watch it. Did you watch it? I did. I, did you really? No, I did say I was going to go oh. and watch it. I did not <laughs> oh, go fuck. and watch it because ultimately I was like, look, I know. You I, don't want to see the IMAX hallway? No, I didn't want to see no? nobody in there. No, like, as bad as I am with money, I was like, this is not a responsible use of my fucking money. And the mo- if things coming out by the end of the month. Right. So it's a weird thing. And I've read a couple of reviews, very interesting responses from people. The people, one review was like, at one point you realize you're watching a movie that's really a TV show and that's going to air on television in a couple of weeks. You know, for no reason. Then you feel like a huge douche. And you feel like a Like Jared dick. Leto. Yes. A uh, couple. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, and I'm kind of glad I didn't see it now that uh, it was hard. Uh, crazy reviews. A couple well, of interesting let's, facts. Do, let's do the Rotten Tomatoes. I'll pull it up. Pull up the Rotten Tomatoes. Let me, and I'll talk about the box office. But a couple of facts to take away how they presented this movie. It wasn't presented as a two-hour movie. It was actually just presented as two TV shows butted up against each other. They didn't even remove, like, previously on at the beginning of the second episode. Like, you'd think they would cut it together as one movie and not have the credits run twice or whatever. Apparently, they didn't do that. And apparently, it has less footage in it than it's going to have when it airs on television. Oh, shit. If that's, How's that possible? I don't know, but that's what I read. And I was like, what? Really? What the fuck? Talk Anthony- about taking it up the ass to go to... We're going to the theater. Right? Like, now, Rotten uh, Tomatoes, yeah. usually they do like the whole series, but I right. think the IMAX has its own listing. Yeah, what, they got what the is the number? theatrical release on there. So it's only been 12 reviews. Okay. Small number. Yes. The number that everyone's <laughs> going to look at. Surprised that many people saw it. <laughs> number everyone's going to look at on the tomato mirror, it's a 0%. <laughs> as far as the average rating, which people should be looking at, yeah. it's a 38 yeah, That's not good either. Very low money-wise per box office mojo in its first weekend, the two-hour premiere netted $1.5 million domestically as well as an additional $1.1 million internationally to give it $2.6 million worldwide. Uh, so obviously that's a low number. However... Well, how many... It- how many theaters was it in? It was like in, uh, I think they said like 600 That's theaters. not very many. That's not a no. lot. But in comparison, big blockbusters are usually in about 3,500 to 4,000 theaters. Check out this. Di- the Game of 393 Thrones. 393 theaters. Three, oh, exact. 393. Okay. So, uh, of course, a limited run. And it was supposed to run for two weeks. It's only one week. The fourth season of Game of Thrones also was aired in IMAX. That only got $1.5 throughout its entire run. So... The whole it's, thing? Well, the, the the IMAX run of the fourth season mm. finale. Oh, got it. Okay. You know, it was like a special thing. So, I like the articles about this like have been all over the place. One is like relatively impressive. Others is like horrible mm. returns. What? And, and, and so. Everything I've seen has been bad. Yeah. However, Movie Bob thinks it's not as bad as Iron Fist. Like he oh. says, it's just fine. He's like, what'd you expect? It's a TV show. It's it's just fine. And Iron Fist is way worse. It's kind of what well, his thing said. 
Same guy show ran both, so. <laughs> That's the thing. This is the fucking <laughs> Scott, Buck Scott Buck sucks group. Hashtag Scott Buck. Scott Buck, I read, I did sucks. a little research on him. His yeah. whole shtick is that he can make things very quickly. With limited resources. Yeah, that's what that's what the director said while he was hired to do this. Yeah. So I shot this thing. That's why China is, is, a, <laughs> why is Ch- that fucking weird? That was the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm sorry, I can't forgive it. Well, st- studios like hiring him because he comes in under budget all the time. Oh crap! Yeah, but and so oh, this yeah. whole At what thing. Cost? So yeah, right? you got a guy who's cheaping out on sets, and you're pointing fucking IMAX cameras at it. This it's not going to go well. No, that's not going to go gonna well. See this. Fake China in IMAX. Yes. So this thing will air in a couple of weeks, I think, at the end of this month. In- we Inhumans was doomed it. from the start. Okay. Yes, it was. Now, this brings up a bigger question, I think. Do Is this... Are we starting to see cracks in Marvel's armor? Is this Marvel's Achilles heel? Is this going to hurt the brand? Nah, I don't give a fuck. No. Moving no, forward. No, here's the thing about... They're giving us a shit sandwich. They don't even give a shit. Yeah. The, the, first off, it's Marvel TV. A lot of right. people don't realize that Marvel TV is not headed up by Fahey. That goes Second, back to the split. Yeah. No one actually knows who the Inhumans are. And no one like the Joe on the street doesn't know that the Inhumans are part of the Marvel Universe anyways, let alone that this is all supposed to be connected. So you're not really ruining anybody's yeah, childhood. Either. Exactly. But I think the fact that everyone sees the big red Marvel logo before shitty things and good things, they don't know. They don't know that Marvel TV isn't run under Marvel. Here, I, MCU. Do, you, do you think people are even watching it? Uh, what the TV show? Are they gonna watch Inhuman? <laughs> well, that's my other question: is like, how much is this gonna hurt when it actually airs on TV? This, this doesn't have the the um the play from age like Agents of Shield. Everyone knew about Shield because they'd seen Avengers, so they were like, "Wow, Agents of Shield! I might see the Avengers on TV." Yeah. No one looks at Inhumans and goes, "I might see Hulk." Like no one thinks that. Yeah, and you know the, the I don't the, think it's gonna really damage much at all. Maybe maybe like. For us, we're going to be like, ah, Marvel TV kind of sucks. It's not that great. But like for Joe Fan, I don't think he gives a fuck. The people who are going to get hurt the most are the people that have to watch this to review it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's us then. It's going to hurt well, a lot. I'm watching one episode in one episode in the first two maybe the first two they're gonna show you know the thing that's fine there's only eight maybe and maybe it gets better uh in three through eight i love your optimism i I doubt it uh i doubt well i just look i just hope but people are you sat you sat through (laughs) a season of powerless and all of gotham yeah so I, you 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 are a glutton for punishment sadist i love it feels good i i don't know if i can watch this other gotham it's coming Uh-oh. up. <laughs> Season four with the Bondage? With, with the the I don't know if I Bruce can Wayne watch. wearing a fucking shitty helmet. Bruce Wayne, I don't know. the Gimp starring Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I can't. I was almost out when they did the Joker, and now I'm almost out again. They're going to do Scarecrow <laughs> and the fucking bonded, shitty, young Batman Elseworlds, shittiest Elseworld God, Batman I, ever. I really hate. I'm not even watching anymore, and I really hate that he's meeting all these villains in his it's teenage years. Rid- ridiculous <laughs> I, but I kind of I'm going to watch it because I'm but just I mean, like well how the fuck are they going to tra- do this? he trained for like 30 minutes yes. to become bad yes. literally for barely for like one scene one and two scenes <laughs> how are you out there jumping in the alley beating down fucking and, muggers and, you asshole and Alfred is teaching him yes. all this shit Alfred's like he's like, not even going God. and trying to find like the best masters and then fucking kick their ass after he learns everything no, from them he doesn't learn awesome. this until much later my that's Batman. good shit Oh my god! But I gotta, I gotta watch it for no, just Alfred, the train wreck because he like was in the army once or something. Yeah. <laughs> Teach me how to punch, Alfred. Oh, it's horrible. I don't know what they're doing. When does Inhumans come out? September twenty ninth. Uh, yeah, I think uh, an end of the month. I don't All right. Know. Well, we'll, we'll maybe review the first episode or two. Maybe. Yeah, but I think uh, yeah. I think already I know how the, have to hate how the review yeah. is going. You, you to did go. make me watch Powerless, and I ended up watching it. So if what I can episode? get through that. Uh, yeah, if you could get through a half hour shitty powerless. So, yeah, hopefully, look, to me, the, the Marvel TV just ha- has had the three duds, which is like the beginning of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Iron Fist, and now it looks like this fucking thing. So, uh, it's separate. It's all reeks of per- Perlmutter. It's all his pro- It's all his fault. Yeah, I, I, and there's a lot of hate on Jeff Loeb, too. They, and a lot of people don't think he's actually all that great a writer, either. I thought, I mean, Spider-Man Blue was good. I haven't read a lot of yeah. Jeff Loeb stuff. I think yeah. he did The Long Halloween. Yeah, he's done all that So he's uh, done some stuff. good stuff, too, yeah, yeah. so I don't know. He's done some good comics. Does it translate? I Just the Inhuman story is crazy because it was going to be a movie. Feige didn't want it. That's what he fought over Perlmutter. That's what caused them to split. And then Perlmutter's like, I'm getting my fucking Inhumans in the theaters no matter what. Just put it in there. And it's a fucking complete piece of crap. It's hilarious. It's a great story. Uh, okay, <laughs> last thing. 
uh, for the new segment, uh, we discussed uh, earlier episodes how Disney was going to create their own streaming service. They want to take all their shit. And at, at, at the moment, it was they had talked about the live action and the animated. And we weren't sure what the future of the Marvel and Star Wars properties was going to be. Well, now we know, listener, and it's not good. Uh, fil- from uh, Deadline, films from Marvel and Star Wars that now go to Netflix will move to Disney's planned ad-free direct-to-consumer streaming service. CEO Bob Iger said today at an investor gathering, quote, we're going to launch big and we're going to launch hot. By, by late 2019, he told the Bank of America uh, Conference Center, Iger adds that it's possible that it will launch in some overseas markets earlier than we launched in the United States. There will be four or five original Disney-branded films made exclusively for the online service, as well as four to five original Disney-branded TV series. It will also have Disney's whole library of 500 films, 7,000 episodes of television, and they're going to produce a lot more shorts. No word yet on pricing or the amount of Disney's investment. So a- enjoy your Marvel and Star Wars throughout the end of next year, through the end of next year. They're taking it with them. Will we pay for this? I don't know. That's a good question because Netflix, I mean, right now, if we're talking just about Marvel and Star Wars, yeah. they're not really a presence on Netflix. No. Like you, They may have one or two movies the on only there. So only Netflix no movies right now from Marvel are C- Civil War and Civil Strange. Civil War, Doctor Strange is on there. You can watch Rogue One. Yeah, that's it. It's still it's, not, it's, it's not early huge. It's in not the huge. deal that they made like last year. It was still early. So the plan was they were going to get more. I don't know the leverage of that. Like, ooh, we're going to take it away. There's hardly anything on there now. Well, I think though, like Thor will will show up there and maybe Black Panther and they but then they're just going to be removed. But outside of buying them on DVD, like you can't just stream you won't be able to stream these movies anywhere except from this fucking Disney service. Which uh, is a little annoying, cause uh, nah, I feel like that. That's bullshit. I don't like that. Well, what's I? I've been saying this. What eventually is going to happen? I think Bob Iger even says it is over time. It'll be a sports marketplace platform similar to iTunes, where you're going to buy everything on an a la carte basis. So you're going to buy. For this month, I want my Disney subscription, and I'm going to watch a bunch of Disney shit. And this month, I might buy Netflix. And this month, I might buy. It's going to happen. It's already happened. Yeah, because they're launching an ESPN service. Well, also, there's, I mean, there you are. Look at what you have right now: Netflix, yeah, yeah, Amazon yeah, Prime, yeah, yeah. Hulu, uh, HBO Hulu, Go, and you're yeah. gonna have your CBS. CBS has well everything. Gonna, I mean, it's all gonna. All Warner these people, Brothers is gonna make all one. these cor- corporations are gonna look at and go, look at Netflix. They're they're taking our product. They're using our product and making money off of it. Why don't we just take it back? You know, one of the exciting things about this is. Uh, like on Netflix, it's really weird. These their original programming. For example, like the Tick, and I was watching that Ashton Kutcher. Tick sitcom. is Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime. Okay, but Netflix or Amazon or these streaming services like Tick, and then there's like sitcoms. Ashton Kutcher's got the sitcom called The Ranch. It's an it's like there's got a laugh track. It's a multi cam traditional sitcom, except there's just like full swearing. There's full swearing, and it's the craziest thing. Like, in Tick, they're swearing. They say fuck a couple of times. And on this sitcom where, you you, you know, you, you see this, you're familiar with this format, and all of a sudden they're swearing, and you're like, this is fucking awesome. So it's kind of neat how these things don't have ratings on these streaming services. You can be a little more exper- experimental. Oh, they'll come soon. You think they're going to they're gonna lamp down? Because I was surprised sure. that there was sure. as much swearing in the Tick as there was. I was like, well, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, network television is, is free. So it's got to have standards and practices and stuff like that. But I think that uh, eventually the they're going to start coming there on. There aren't any now. I mean, that other movie, Okja, that I talked about a few weeks ago, same thing. It looks like a family movie. But there's fucking, there's a lot of swearing and it gets really dark. So, but these are things that like a normal studio or network, they wouldn't touch this shit if the way they are, you know? So, so I'm going to predict this. Yeah. Here's the rundown. Okay. Um, within like... 10 years, there's going to be some president or some fucking whack job that's going to be like, our society is being ruined by the internet and everything and censorship has to happen. And just like they did with the comics code and all that other stuff, it's in there. Lock it down. We're enjoying the heyday of it now. I thought you were saying you were going to say the opposite. We're going to have a, well, we kind of have that. What, like what happens in idiocracy, a president that just like, we're fucked America. Like just using swear words out of the open. Isn't it? No oh, yeah, decorum. Trump's about, about to be that. He did second. single-handedly well, make idiotocracy come true. Do you guys think, or not think, will you guys buy 
the Disney streaming I service. I don't know. 500 yeah. films, 7,000 episodes. It's a lot now, of content. All Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, and they'll make exclusive content. And he's quoted as saying in here, this will also be the home for uh, lower budget films for Disney. Like if Marvel starts making exclusive stuff for this streaming service, I may have to fucking buy it or just <laughs> find it. Here's the other thing, though. It's how much is this going to affect Netflix? Because the kids section on Netflix is pro- like one of their most successful, most streamed things. And a lot of that is all this Disney shit that's going to get pulled. Yeah, that's going to really get it. Parents mm-hmm. are going to that's who, where they're going to make their money. Parents are going to have to either quit one thing and add this one or spend more money, add another. Or service. yeah, a bunch of new programming will arise and to fill that gap. Oh, in on uh, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, Netflix I, will oh, have to partner. That's an opportunity that's, for right. somebody to fucking fill up that gap. The giant that is Disney steps out of the way, makes a great power vacuum. Now somebody can jump in there and really make uh some cool shit you and know what take what they over. should do? That's interesting. They should take Millar World and dumb it down for kids. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a little kick, the little kick ass. You call it little kick ass? It's like Listen, a little Netflix has a, an opportunity. Like it, 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 they have the subscribers. They have a ton. Yes, they got all these people yes. already that are in in the mix. But yeah, yeah, they have to now. If Disney's gone, they have to go and go toe to toe with them and fucking be a kid come up with a bunch of shit well kid shit to- but also to 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 put to become like the marvel anthony i think you said it is you take the miller world shit and you blow that out you have they have so much content they can make now of a, a well, lot of fun Netflix stuff that has to their up. advantage is they were first to market so yeah or at least they have name at least brand the, recognition the brand that everyone yeah they have yeah. the brand like netflix to streaming is like kleenex to tissue paper so what do you think that netflix should do anthony you being the businessman i would say they're already in that in that re- um, role of creating original content, yeah. I think that is going to be their th- the big thing for them is have these or- these things that they can't or uh, create be successful because I see more and more studios that are on Netflix that mm-hmm. g- are the size of like a Disney or maybe a little smaller eventually creating their own subscription services mm. because ev- ev- no one's gonna everyone wants to more a bigger chunk of the pie. And no one's right. gonna give everything so like up. a Fox or like a CB or like whatever studios have make stuff their own on shit. Netflix eventually yeah. might just take it off. The whole reason Netflix was lucrative is because they already had all this stuff, the front end right. all done. Yes, they had. OK, just give me your product and we'll we'll distribute but it. Do they need that anymore? They have said they want to be 50 percent no, or more original content. The bandwidth and all that stuff has gotten yeah. easier. And now these com- companies can easily kind of. They see the model and they have something to copy now. Right. They see a model that works and now they can copy it. Like there's a bit of a lot of people that have tried to be like a Netflix, like a crackle. Yeah. CISO. And, 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 CISO is a thing that like went out of business. They were trying the yeah, same thing. And Pluto yeah. and all these other little like uh, things. So and now these apps, these like uh, apps where people can just download stuff are are prol- proliferating the market. And they're like, hey, we could just do our own. I like Crackle. They had the uh, Seinfeld comedians and cars getting coffee. And uh, it's a great show. Uh, the other thing with the Netflix, great TV shows, their original movies really haven't really broken out or done anything. We'll, we'll see what this Will Smith, Will Smith to me, I know they, they, they had the yeah. deal with Adam Sandler, but yeah, that was everyone fucking, thinks Adam Sandler's past his fucking why prime. Why are they wasting yeah. money on Adam Sandler? But apparently but one Smith of his movies. Will Smith is still a guy, like the guy, one of the guys yeah, in the industry. Yeah. One of those Adam Sandler movies is like the most streamed movie on Netflix or some shit. I don't know why yeah, they it was, wasted it. There's all weird money. numbers. Like, like they, they claim that Iron Fist was their most streamed show at one right. point. Most, or like, most what? binge watched yeah, or something. I was, like, I was like, where do these numbers come from? Well, and the other thing is they're kind of like Apple and podcasts. They don't really disclose. No, they're a uh, private company. Things. Yeah, they don't have to. Yeah. You know, they don't have to. So interesting. And, and the, the way they, they measure things. They don't. As long as they have subscribers, they don't right. care how it many people it watch it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So they're willing to take risks, put shit out there, and and they've changed the model. They've caused this binge watching society. Let's see if they can survive. This they changed ex- the game. They, this they might. They Brexit. might in a Disney couple Brexit. years. They're, they're, I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years if they they went out of business. To be honest with you. What? Yeah. If everyone, if every studio creates their own subscription service, and now you have to go a la carte, and you're not. Oh, Picking up everything. Why do you need Netflix? Why would you need Netflix? Mm, well, but look. Would, but my point is, is Netflix, yeah. for, even if they go out of business, they they've changed the game. But the Marvel TV shows stay on Netflix because they make them, and they produce them. Well, if Netflix builds a brand of all original content, Which is that what you they're can't doing get anywhere else. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what they're doing. Then you'd be more inclined to stay. Right. With them. I think they're doing that well right now. There's so much shit out there. Uh, well, they just started doing yeah, stuff that yeah. seems to be good. Uh, how long they can keep it going? 
like Stranger Things. Yeah. Yep. Stranger Things is huge for them. Yes. House of Cards. Yes. Narcos. You got Make, Narcos. Making a Murderer was like huge for them. Huge. Yeah. 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 They also have the documentary market too, kind of. Locked That's what down. I first when I first got Netflix. All I watched was their documentaries because there were so many great ones I'd never seen. Uh, I was just I was obsessed over those docs. It was great. Yeah. That's why I got it. All right, gang. That's it for the news. Let's take a quick break. I'm going to play some promos of some indie pods that you should check out. Support the indie creator, and we'll be right back with some Game of Thrones talk. Yes. What? After these messages. Do you like superheroes? Do you like movies, television shows, and comic books? Do you like listening to a guy rant about these things for hours on end? Well, then you're in luck, because you need to check out Pod Capers, the official podcast of a place to hang your cape. Featuring me, Scott James Meridue, we'll be talking about a variety of geek and nerdy issues, joined each week by a rotating panel of guests that will try to contain me. Jokes on them, I cannot be contained. So please join us on Pod Capers, the official podcast of A Place to Hang Your Cape, where superheroes go to relax, but I never do. Cue the music! Are you afraid of what goes bump in the night? Have you or your friends ever pondered a conspiracy? Do you want to know more about the unknown? If so, then put on your tinfoil hat, sit down, and pick up your computer, tablet, or phone. Go to iTunes or YouTube and search for Secret Transmission Podcast and listen to us try to explain the unexplainable. Follow us on Twitter for updates on shows. At Secret Trans Pod. That's S-E-C-R-E-T-T-R-A-N-S-P-O-D. Or you can email us suggestions at secrettransmission at hotmail.com. That's S-E-C-R-E-T-T-R-A-N-S-M-I-S-S-I-O-N at hotmail.com. Hey, my name's Paul, and I'm not an animal expert. I'm Donna, and I'm not an animal expert either. And together we do a podcast about animals called Varmints. Every week we pick an animal, do a bunch of research on it, and bring you some interesting facts about that animal. But we don't stop there. We talk about that animal in movies, TV, and other pop culture. And we talk about whether or not that animal would make a tasty dish, and how intelligent we think it is on the scale of 1 to 10. It's exactly like one of those fancy PBS nature documentaries. Except with more poo jokes. New episodes go live every Thursday wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Or you can visit us at BlazingCaribouStudios.com. <laughs> Varmints! Varmints! <laughs> <laughs> The Jock and Nerd Podcast. Listener, want to mention, join our kick-ass fan club over on the Patreon. Jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. You help us out, and we help you out by giving you more show. You pledge, you're going to get an RSS feed with bonus content, a whole exclusive podcast just for you for helping us out. We have a great community. And super shout out to listener and friend Ron Hans. He increased his pledge today. What? It went up. Thank you, Ron. Whoa. You, everybody should do yeah. that. Everyone should be like Ron. Be like Joe Henry. Be like. Double down. Double down. Whatever it is, double it. And then add two. And that's your pledge. And of course, every tier you go up, you get more things. Just visit jockanerd.com slash Patreon. For the details, listener, here it is. Game of Thrones season one discussion, only six years late, but I'm still going to play this. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Because here's the thing. We discussed how everybody in the fucking world, except for Anthony and myself, have watched this. But there's some people we are taking on the ride with us. So I'm sorry if we spoil some things. We're going too far. But just for the record from our Facebook group. Uh, the reaction to us starting to watch this has been so fucking cool and hilarious. Uh, so people watching with us so far, I have J.R. Flamin, who I mentioned at the beginning, lives in Montana. He says, I'll start Game of Thrones also. See y'all at the end of season one. So at least you got one listener to entertain with your Game of Thrones reviews. Wes Cranford said, Christ, where do you guys find the time? I'll have to download to start and catch up. But seriously, I'll probably just not watch and get the cliff notes from you guys. That's fine. You can do that too. 
Uh, Ron Hahn said, we just talked about it, increased his pledge. He says, FYI, JNN, I am with you both and have never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. I, too, will now go on the journey with you. He is currently four episodes in. Geek Boner. And then finally, listener Chris Williams uh, wrote, watch the first two episodes, incest, no thanks. <laughs> you can't judge it on the first two no, episodes. No, you know what? Game of Thrones, I wrote, worth the incest. It really is. It really <laughs> Let's is. Let's go over to real quick, so... I think what we'll do, and this will probably, this might change. Did you guys watch the entire season? Yes. Well, uh, okay. Well, yeah. here's what Go we'll on. do. So yeah. at the end of every show, we'll do a quick Game of Thrones, like, hey, where are you at? Yes. And me and Imran talked prior to this. So right now, I am one episode away from finishing season two. So Dude, I've he's binged winning. very hard. Whoa. He's winning the race. I have only watched the first but season. But Imran's only watched the first season. So for his sake, we will cap it at the end of the first season this and will then be a season one discussion then you can season kinda... one discuss, discussion yeah. and then wherever imran is at at the next episode is where we will leave will continue awesome and then you can kind of tease what so i it, it's you know basically following up. imran until he either passes now, me are, are you like a crack addict with this because you, you're blazing through he it is. the more the more i've watched it the more i am getting very very much addicted and the thing is is i like to read about the characters and i can't even do that either so because if, if I read anything about the characters, it'll spoil something for me. So I, right. instead of doing that, I'm like, well, I have to find out, and I keep watching. So that's our watch update. But Anthony, look, let's start there. I am enjoying it also, even though I got to the end of the first season. Why are we enjoying this? What is what is ticking this thing off for us? What What's getting it to you? Well, for me, I would have to say the first few episodes, even up until the end of season one, it wasn't like I was like, wow, this is amazing or anything like that. I thought it was solid film, solid TV. But then once I got more into the the history, yeah. and then once, especially once I got to season two and it started to really open up, then I was like, what's appealing for me is, first off, I really enjoy history. And although this is fake history, this is so well thought out that it feels like real history. This, yeah. This so is I've, watched, it, yeah. I've sent Imran like YouTube videos yes. about the... The fall of the Mad King and like yeah everything all that the happened before kingdoms and the first and men the and the Andals and the maps and I'm like this is the fucking map is amazing important. yeah there's a lot of lore that, that yeah. and, and uh, just world building that's huge in this yeah that is really what I enjoy there's one other thing Chris my friend Chris Atello kind of put it the best for me the show is a character driven historical fantasy. And if there's anything I really like, it's history and it's character driven mm -hmm. shows. Character -driven. And this is basically the epitome of that. Did, isn't that crazy? Did you think you would enjoy it this much? No, because right? I hate, fa I, I don't yes. give a fuck about Lord of the Rings. I don't yes. care about medieval times. Yes. Like the whole fantasy aspect for me never was, a, uh, never was appealing, but I'm fucking enjoying it. Yeah. And it's interesting how they work in their fantasy. So for me, overall, you? the first season, it did kind of. After everyone said everything, it kind of felt like a little bit of work. I was just watching to pay attention, trying to keep get the names, the characters. Uh, as the season went on, though, like I found myself going, okay, I got to watch the next one. It has great cliff cliffhanger endings, and I loved the way the season ended, how it progressed. Uh, but what I realized is exactly what you said. It's like this fucking guy came up with all this bullshit fake history. Like he took human history and fan fictioned it, basically. <laughs> he must have been so lonely when he was young to come up with all these fucking names and then it dawned on me today I could be learning actual fucking history <laughs> the amount of space I have to use in my head to hold all these allegiances and lands and lords and who belongs to who I could have I've forgotten everything about the first world war that I learned from Dan Carlin's <laughs> hardcore history podcast but it's like you could be learning real fucking history but what he's done is brilliant is fan fictioning history like this is what people like about history uh, and yeah, man, the, my fa let's go favorite. Uh, let's do favorite characters. So I did enjoy it. I, and after this, like, I'm going to start the second season as soon as we're done here. Uh, one of the guys I've enjoyed the most is the fucking Dinklage dude. Tyrion Lannister. The Dinklage. Great character. Great portrayal by Peter. He Dinklage. does. He, he does steal the show. He, he's every awesome. scene he's in and you know, he, he gets a lot of chance to tell these stories and you really learn the most about him. Like he's so fleshed out and you feel for him and you see how he's torn and he's, and he, and the whole fact that, you know, he uses his words are his weapon. 
Uh, he he embraces being called an imp, a half man, and those are some of the best scenes, like in the battle where they're like they're chanting half man, half man, and then he turns around and gets knocked out by a mallet and misses the whole battle. Yeah, it's great. It's so great. He gets he's like, did we win? What's cool about his character too, and the way he's written is he's great. Like every time he's on the on the screen, he's magnetic. He has the best lines. He's the smartest guy in the room. Yeah, um, he's easy to root for. Yet he's a fucking Lannister. <laughs> he's a, so he's a it's weird like, Lannister. I, and he, like, at the end of the day, he's still, at least in season one, he's still loyal to his family to an, a certain point. So he's still kind of working for the bad guys, yet he's the best guy in the entire show. I mean, I'm, I'm like conflicted. Like right. you're, suppo- you're, you're, you're supposed, you're supposed conflicted to every time you see him. Yeah. I don't know if, I, you know, you're so, I guess you're supposed to be rooting for the Starks and hate the Lannisters, but I don't know if I really hate the Lannisters as much as respect them for the moves they well, made. There's, there's, uh, times where you're going to hate the characters and there's time you're going to all be all sudden like them. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where it's, it's up and down. Kind of like uh, when you were watching Buffy, and then Angel turned bad, right? And then, right, right, and then Angel turned good. Yeah, well, yeah. and it's the same kind of thing. It's really cool, though. I mean, another great character has an amazing arc in the first season alone is Daenerys. Uh, she goes from being sold off into like a crazy tribe to having all this power and that amazing. I guess we could spoil it for people. If yeah, you, you hit that spoiler button. It's I been did, six I years. Did. Spoiler alert. She fucking walks into the pyre. The bitch don't burn people. Oh, shit. oh my God. That was that was amazing. And the little the fucking eggs hatch and you see the three little dragons. I was like, oh, snap. Plus, she tied that lady, burned her alive without blinking an eye. She gets hardcore. By the end, like what? That already a great journey for the Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> Absolutely! Wow. So I got I got to throw in here that watching season ten or season one, episode ten. Yeah, that had to suck. Really took a lot of the steam out of the last part of this season for me. Because as you know, listener, season nine. Let's talk about Se- that the episode nine that of season episode one. nine, season one. Look, and going into this, I, I already knew. Like everyone's like everyone dies. Everyone you love dies. So. By the end, you know, they captured Ned Stark. They got him up on the thing. Fucking Joffrey is a little dick. I just want to fucking punch him in the face. Isn't he the best bad guy? Oh, oh my awesome. God. He you plays fucking it, love hating he him. He plays it so good because he is hateable. Like, when can he die? Yes. Please let him die. I want him to die Sa- now. Sansa was about to push him, and I was like, yes, yes. Go fucking push him now. And she didn't. But... You know, he's up there and he he's promised the mercy and he's like, bring me his head. And I'm like, OK, I knew that he was going to die, but I was a little shocked. And then I was like, maybe then maybe they're not going to do that. But I'm like, no, no, this game throws. I got to do it. And I'm like, maybe they're not going to do it. And then, of course, shunk and the season ends. So, Anthony, the first thing you watch is them holding up Ned Stark's <laughs> head. And you're very confused that I can see why. Yes. <laughs> I, I ta- in talking to all my Game of Thrones friends, they were like, wow, that really sucks. You saw that first episode or that that is your first episode because. I guess that was the moment, and there's reaction videos of people online through on people YouTube. People lost their where shit. That's where people lost their shit, and we're like, "Holy fuck, this show is crazy!" Yeah, I mean, this is the first season, so that would have been because well, the whole when... time, Eddard Stark, Ned, yeah, yeah. has been portray- portrayed as the lead protagonist, and yeah. he's the honorable guy, and he's the guy you're rooting for throughout the entire show. You'd never kill but that, that guy. Sets up, that sets up the whole entire show. Right. That first season sets you up with okay. You have this guy who is kind of like what you want in a leader, and now he's gone. Yeah. And everything now is like the Lannisters have uh, the disadvantage, and now like it's everybody scrambling to try and it's all pick up, up in after. the air. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I actually think I know that there's more lands and more people, and we're going to meet more things, but very smart in the first season to it, how to introduce this. I thought they did a great job because there is a lot, but they're, they, they're they clearly kept they're, they're basically focused. the Starks, yeah. the Lannisters, and yeah. uh, the Daenerys. Targaryens. Yeah. yeah. Targaryen. Uh, another uh, favorite moment was when uh, Lady Stark's like taken off. And Tyrion finds her and she's in that pub and she goes around to the night. She's like, I know your crest. My father fought with you and I know you. My father loved you. And then she's like, this guy tried to kill me. Sees him. And they all just fucking pull their swords out and get him. I was like, that's fucking badass. But I thought it was funny. They had him and then they lost him. And now they got Jamie. Yeah. Uh, lots Jamie of Lannister switcheroos. is a fucking amazing character already in this first. I'm like, I really, this guy's oh, a fucking bastard. He, not, you know, and not a bastard like Jon Snow. Not that kind of, like there's a, a lot of bastards. Cunt. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is, I mean, he's, what, what do you find about him? Cause right. I mean, to me, I see him as a bastard, but he hasn't really, I, I, I like that. About? The, he's, he's the guy that's been fucking his sister. Well, that is true. Throws a little kid out the balcony. That was awesome. And, <laughs> and is a Kingslayer, which I had to explain to you, isn't it's derogatory, is, it, is a derogatory term for him. I would think that would be a cool nickname. Yes, I am the Kingslayer. Right. But no, yeah. So Joffrey's their kid, and Ned finds out, and that's uh, where kind of Joffrey, all that well, goes. I'll, I'll, let me throw in some other characters yeah, and, uh, yeah. and moments. Uh, Joffrey's great. Joffrey is the, one of the biggest cunts I've ever met. He's, he has a face, a face you want to punch. He does kind of look inbred, too. Like, I was like, he should be more inbred he looking. He was in um, the Batman Begins. He was the kid oh, that like yeah. uh, Rachel Dawes yes. helps Holy out. Holy shit. Oh, Good that point. was him. Damn. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the the part where Ned Stark out, outsmarts the Lannisters at the end and takes over like like wins his first battle and all the generals or bannermen as oh, they're yeah. called yeah yeah who have been doubting him the first guy that's been just doubting him throughout the entire thing bends on one knee and goes the King of the North yeah like damn that's an awesome fucking moment right there a uh, Rob Rob Stark Rob Stark I'm sorry yeah, Rob yeah, Stark becomes yeah. the King of the North that's cool yeah. um the part where you first meet I believe it's Lisa Aaron. And she's sitting on the throne, and there's a fucking ten <laughs> yes. year old on her teat. I thought He's that a was hilarious. Old to be breastfeeding. <laughs> I though. thought that was hilarious. Seems a little odd. And that little mm, punk, yeah, some weird shit that little punk kid who's going to become king eventually is just screaming, "Is he going to fly? I want to see him fly." Referring I want to, to see that little bad fly. Yeah, referring to Tyrion <laughs> Lannister. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, this kid is. I want to punch him after I kill Joffrey. It's very disturbing. <laughs> it's so okay. disturbing. Like they weave in like very disturbing things that probably were happening back then yeah, in well, our times too. Yes, and, I mean, and all they just of this throw stuff. around, uh, yes. you know, tits and and suck my cock and all this stuff. Is it's I so mean, good. largely this is like it's human history with a little bit of fantasy thrown in on the edges, right. minus the dragons and the zombies and the White Walkers. This is your medieval ages. This is your ancient Egyptians, your Romans. The same kind of drama. What's the deal with the Momoa? What did they not trust him to to act or say something? He's not in it that much. I, I don't, and I don't they think fucking he, he wasn't the guy he is now. In he terms wasn't. of name, this is name six power. years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't think he can I think act. This that show made him. Yeah, yeah. like this after show they made killed him off, yeah. people were like, oh, I want more of him. A lot of characters do not make it out of season one. <laughs> but like, listen. Uh, people dying that you like, yeah. it's just, you got to get used to it. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm used to that. Uh, I, and I know, I know these things are going to happen. And do you think Tyrion makes it to the end? Oh, f- uh, Ooh. fuck. Uh, that do you have some, put some money on it. Shit. That one. I hope he does that one. I don't know. He's that smart one, that enough. One. Who do you, okay. He's smart right. enough that he who should. Who do you see? Who do you see making it to the end? Okay. But see, I already know. Give me, give me three people that you think are going to make it in the final final. I know a couple of people. Yeah. That make it. To we're, the we're, that's a, that's a thing. I don't, I can't answer that because I, I've seen previews for show the show. Oh. So I know but it didn't reg- it, it wasn't registering at the time, but I recognize the faces enough to be like, oh, yeah, that's that's yeah, this you know, person. Anthony. I did something similar to you in the middle. I was on episode four of season one and I went back to it and I went to my Xfinity and I went bum, 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 episode five, except it was season seven. And I started ah. it. And I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot to go back to the first season. It, it so, is, it's so bad now that. Yeah. Like, I'm so into it. Yeah, and there's so much spoilers out there. I can't even I like look at the the description of the episode underneath on HBO Go. Like I can't I, if I look at that, it'll spoil things. Do you want? Can, should we have rugs uh, tell us if these people make it? No, <laughs> no. I just want to hear what you say, and then I won't say anything. I, I, okay, here's okay. Here's here's who I think will make it. I will go with uh, Jon Snow. Yeah, these are legitimate guesses, not me. Okay, uh, on people I've seen on I, I know people that have made it and I'm not going to guess them Jon Snow Tyrion Lannister and Jaime Lannister okay so I know Cersei nope. Lannister interesting yeah. interesting ideas Daenerys and I you think she's going to make it to the end yes are we are okay. we saying the end as in where, where, they are where now. you're at right now rugs or where, at, yeah, end, current. where, where i'm okay, at right yeah. now at the end of right. the, the last season and i really hope terry and lannister is still alive at the end of season seven oh yeah i'll I tell know. you that right fucking now because he's awesome he steals every fucking scene but again i also know like things have been spoiled like when we get to the red wedding like i kind of know what's gonna happen i already bet- know see 
I will punch you in the face, Imran, because we were already talking at work, and <laughs> yes. you were talking about things that you already knew were happening, as if, yeah. ever, if as if I knew what they were happening, and you were just going to tell me. It's so. I remember I had a conversation with Imran yes. about Game of Thrones yeah. on the show, and I told him everything. Yes, you have told me a lot too, but I don't know if I remember that. I've done a lot yeah. of drugs, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, any other fate? The map. First of all, the map is very helpful. Yeah, I gave, I gave Imran a map of what was going HBO's on. HBO's viewers guide is also awesome because you can stop up to what you've watched and it'll show you just those characters and just that part of the map that they've addressed and it grows as you watch so that's really fun i'm gonna really use that as a reference go back you know every couple episodes and catch up and read the extra shit i'm kind of jealous of you guys because you have something cool to watch i mean there's and so that's good the thing. there's, yeah. there's nothing right now so like this is really filling a pretty good hole there i know <laughs> so, i'm so fucking depressed that dark matter got, got oh. canceled. Yes, remember he said he liked dark matter yeah. canceled after the third season i i, I, I have to say this is the maybe the second or third after walking dead the second show that I'm really getting into that, that I can just binge watch besides mm-hmm. the Netflix stuff. Um, and, I, and I'm really enjoying the the fact that I can binge watch, binge watch it yeah. and not wow. have to wait a week and not have to wait a week and listen to listen or read articles about yeah. why the show is good or bad. Yeah. I can just continue to watch it and just enjoy yeah. the story. So my my thought is I really enjoy binge watching <laughs> and this binge watching format is fucking great. We don't have to suffer like everyone else well, did. Well, not only that, but it's just a the, year the, in between seasons. It's though, not that even. too. It's the I don't have to deal with people's opinion and maybe making me think I didn't like something that I might have liked. Right, right. I can just keep watching and be like, all right, I just want to see how it plays out. That's a, instead of the well, week if you're to week having thing. Fun, yeah. Watching it, then that's all that matters. Right. Yeah, but uh, but I think that, that 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 waiting, I think, does it. There, it builds anticipation, but I also think. It lets you your mind go like, uh, I can start to poke holes in some of this stuff. Whereas the binge watch is like, I'm just gonna keep going. Just go. I mean, I remember when Sopranos was on air. That was like that was one of the last times that I I was so excited for for Sunday nights because and and that was huge conversation and it was really good. But the waiting a year plus between seasons was always brutal. Uh, but. Also, you uh, during the week, HBO would replay the show, so you'd watch that episode like over and over again when The Sopranos was on. Uh, these videos you sent me are really good. Listener, I will post them in the show notes. If you are following along with us watching the show, jockandrew.com slash 185. So where do you put this on first seasons of shows? Like, how high do you rate mm. it? As far as first seasons, it was tough for me to rank it because I watched the fucking season finale first. <laughs> so you blew your load. I blew like, it. I re- it really blew things, but... The more it, it, I would say the first like two or three episodes, I was like, this is okay, but I want to, I was going to keep watching because, because of the hype. Yeah. Um, but once it starts to like grow and you see the characters and you see the, the thought behind it, I really started to get into it. So I, 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 I'm enjoying the, the, the learning of what's going on and all the yeah, different aspects. Like- the amount of setup in this first two episodes and three episodes, it's like mind boggling yeah. and you have to kind of overcome it. And then it starts to kind of coast a little bit. Yeah. I, I felt like I had to, I almost had to push through the first yeah. few episodes. Yeah. Not because, I mean, they were mild, they were entertaining. They had good cliffhangers, but it wasn't like, it's not an easy, you have to really be paying attention. You have to pay attention because yeah. it's, it does it. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like Rome or Deadwood or like a Shakespeare thing. Like you really got to pay attention. So it felt like a little bit of work, but you could see what they were building and where they were going. Another comparison is like of a universe's Marvel, for instance, like the first Iron Man, you could watch that and it not be like, you're, you're getting dropped in right at the beginning of the story almost. Yeah. But, with Game of Thrones, what they did is they dropped you in basically till like 6,000 years after the story started. So they're referring to things as if it's common history that everyone on in, in the fictional yes. story knows. Yes. But you as the list or the, the, uh, the viewer, you have no idea what the fuck well, they're talking about. What happens about. is they, they drop these little nuggets yeah. Yeah. and then they keep expanding on them as yeah. you go. And then they mention it like enough times. Where if you weren't paying attention the first 50 times, <laughs> you eventually, oh, I get it. Because different people talk about the same act that happens over and over right. again. Well, they're the, mentioning it. They're, they're, like, they, they, they'll, they'll casually drop the Mad King 
And like for me, as someone that's obviously never read the books, I'm like, the fuck are they even talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. But they drop it so casually that they're not explaining that to you until eventually later when more and more details. They talk come about up. characters you don't meet, like the Stannis, uh, Stannis Baratheon, and right. all these guys. Uh, that one, but it's all intentional yes. too. It's not like. Like they were just fucking with you. Like, like if you're watching Lost, right. it's where they, totally not they like dropping Lost. things yes. and never. No, yeah. they they're, they they totally will get to it. No, and I love that. I love that it rewards you for paying attention, for sticking with it. Those videos you sent me, Anthony, one about the lands and all the shit that happened before the show started, like a whole bunch of shit. I was like, how the fuck? Who who figured this out? And I guess it's from the books. It's in the books. Yeah, it's in the book. But uh, it, it's uh, the other question I have is. How big is this? Like, you look at this map. Wh like, what is the distance? I'm really curious. How far are things? It's supposed to be the size of England. So that Westeros part connected to the north looks like about the size of England. So that's what I was thinking. Like, if you take England and then uh, whatever's next to England, the, the, the rest of the Europe, Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, the, it's it's supposed to be those things. Okay. Like, you know, remember, remember, like, in Beowulf, it was, like, the Danes and the English and the Scottish, right. and they were always fucking fighting with each other right. and crossing the ocean and fucking fucking each other over. So uh, it's based on that kind of yeah. uh, um, landmass. God, so, George R. Martin must have been the loneliest R. R. fucking kid when he was younger, because <laughs> how the fuck do you come up with this? Apparently, the guy who plays Jon Snow, Kit Harington, looks exactly like... Martin did when he was his age, like had the same sleazy hair, the sleazy mustache. Uh, I think that's interesting. He's probably projected a lot of shit that he wished he was into this show. A couple, couple more thoughts. Yeah. Really enjoying the Starks. Again, another a, a family that uh, at first seems kind of white bread, but I'm really With enjoying. Gingers. Yeah. yeah, gingers. Yeah. But I'm enjoying how noble they are and how, how much honor they have. Even like Jon Snow up in, even though he's a bastard. Um, his nobility and him protecting another character I like. Sam, is it Samwell? Samwell's great. The Night Samwell. Watch guard. The stuff that happened to the wall is very cool. The fat boy. Yeah. Um, he's hilarious. He's yeah. And then another thing, I'm like remember I mentioned, is there anything, I mean, I can think of like Star Wars, Star Trek, maybe Marvel, DC, but what's the last thing that's gotten this popular that has been this well thought out in terms of world building and a new world? Like someone mentioned to me, my, uh, my friend Irwin mentioned to me that this is like this generation Star Wars in terms of world building uh, mm -hmm. and this other universe that everyone can get into and dive into the history of that is completely made up. I mean, Lord of the Rings is my initial comparison, but it's right? not even like that, really. Lord well, you know, you can, a lot of it is owed to, to Tolkien. Yes, obviously. yes, like, yes. Tolkien yes. is um, is definitely the predecessor that the, everything that the inspiration, goes back to, the, the inspiration, yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and he was very well thought out. And um, there are things that are really well thought out, but not in a TV show like this to this level. No, right. this not thing this is popular. No, yeah. not this popular. I mean, this thing is already so deep. And from what I understand, we haven't even scratched the fucking surface no, at the end of season thing. one. I'm, I'm, I'm holding back, Imran, because when you get into season two. It's it's slowly start to so starting to bloom. Te tease out for me a little bit what what I can expect. What's awesome about season two? Well, this isn't a spoiler, but you'll you'll meet Stannis. Okay, good. Um, and you're just gonna. It's literally like you'll those houses that were hinted at in the videos are starting to come into play. Like Rug Boy said, yeah, them killing Ned Stark really fucks things. <laughs> so that, see it makes it interesting. Two. That is the yeah. kind of the catalyst for it. it actually, it, it almost feels like. Season one, like you need to, you need to watch, you need to like take your vitamins. That's season one, right? And then season two, you can start eating like some real good so shit. So that first season is all <laughs> set up. It's just basically a that's what it feels up. like wow. after what now getting into well, season two. It has season one does these two things. It introduces you to the nobility of the Starks and how fucking like evil the Lannisters are, mm -hmm. and and basically you you need to have that in you when you watch the rest of the show it's that and then i would also throw on that the targaryen girl Den Daenerys, is somewhere far away and she needs she's trying to get back she's, yeah, she's trying to get home speaking of uh ta the targaryens like you had asked me uh at work anthony about the dothraki language it's made up but if it sounded like anything and like to me i like what they've done it does sound kind of like an arabic persian hebrew you know, the, the the fact that there's like Q sounds and the, the th, there's a lot of the th sounds, which is like a letter in Arabic. So 
I appreciate that, but but it does also just sound like a made up language. It's, I got I got one more yeah. question for you that you didn't put on the notes. Okay. Favorite sexy time <laughs> moment. Oh. <laughs> uh well, what did we have? We had the brother sister fucking. You saw that? They, although, they, although that wasn't all that sexy. No, they kept it their wasn't. On. We had uh, Daenerys getting uh, getting You've it seen from her behind. naked more than a few times, but she didn't look too into it. Not at first. Uh, uh, and she uh, learns later. The little man gets a lot of ass. Surprisingly, he does like an ass. Yeah, there's a lot of. He's got that crazy, uh, that crazy woman with him who uh, he's not supposed to take with him, but he does anyways. That's Shay. not gonna bite him. Shay, of course, that's not gonna bite him in the ass. Why would it? Uh, but what's the what's another one? You've got uh, the redhead. I believe her name is Ross. Oh, I think her name is Ross. Yeah, where she's banging Greyjoy, and then he she leaves on the cart to go to um, King's Landing, and she shows him her oh, vagina yeah, one last yeah. time. That girl's pretty hot. Yeah, the girl's fucking hot. Yeah, there's some good looking chicks. There's some good looking naked chicks. Was there? Uh, did Did Rob Stark get anything yet? Rob Stark is not. I know no. what you're hinting at, and he has not gotten anything no. yet in season one. Uh-huh. But. I'd have to go Amelia Clark. Wow. Dude, she I, I, I yeah. did not think she was all that special in Terminator, she, yeah. but God, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Like her face is really stunning and the the yellow white hair that is looks like great. looks great on her. But, but my favorite girl is um my favorite two things are I love Ross. I believe that's her name, the redhead. Ross, yeah, yeah. I like Ross. her too. Yeah, yeah. I think she's great. Yeah. And the part where uh Daenerys is learning from the Dothraki chick, that's pretty hot. How, how to, to please the call. How to please yes. the call is yes. a very, very yeah. nice scene. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I hope there's more. Oh, and, oh, I got one more. Yeah. And when, even though he sucks, was I think his name is Viserys? Daenerys' brother. Uh Oh, that fucking dies. asshole, yeah. With but the gold when crown. He's t- when he's telling the dragon story to the girl in the oh, tub. while she's blowing him? Or... While, she, while she's like oh, in and off on him. it. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so good. That girl's hot, too. Yeah. <laughs> that girl's great. That guy, I was surprised he died. I was like, I thought he was going to make it longer, but then Cal's like, here's your gold crown, asshole. And just pours hot, molten gold. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear this stuff, Rugby, are you like... <laughs> Man, I wish I had that enthusiasm. Or you're like, wait till the shit. Wait till they watch more. No, I remember. I'm, rem- re- I'm having fun listening to you guys talk about Six it. Like I remember I'm reminiscing about all these things that happened. Well, I we, hope we can we re- hope that the listener yeah, can feel the same yeah. way. I, hope- I think. I mean, it's fun it, for you guys to talk about it. It really is. I mean, it is something that I can see. I'm getting obsessed, and it's exci- It's very exciting. So. And I am, everyone, I am look, now balls deep in it. Yeah, and look, listen. Jordan Radford was yelling at us in the Blab days. Remember? Like oh, I, I told her I would watch this. So. We are late, but now we're going to catch up. So this is going to be a great journey. Thank you guys for joining us. We hope you appreciate it. Let's read some emails and we'll peace out. Uh, I got an email. Oh, wait, I had one more story. Game of Thrones season seven reportedly pirated over one billion times. Oh, shit. That's how successful the show is. So you don't have to pay for it. A billion. A bill. One billion times it was pirated the last season. (laughs) That's what you know. You got well, good content. <laughs> I'll just say that I'm not exactly paying for this either. Oh, snap. Oh, I'm, paying, I'm paying for it. <laughs> Are you paying for the HBO? Yeah, code? I've had it. Uh, oh, you had again, it. Again, okay. I've had it since The Sopranos. Like, I've always had HBO. Uh, right. just well, are you using HBO Go or On Demand? Uh, I'm using On Demand on the TV. On TV? So you can't, you can't fast forward then? No, you can on some of them. Some of them. The okay. new shows you can't when they're on demand, like when they run and then it's on On Demand the next day. But got this it. shit from six years ago. You could do whatever you want. They don't I'm using a, a friend's HBO Go. Oh, there you go. Uh, oh, I had another story. My sister texted me about Netflix, T-Mobile. If you have a T-Mobile family plan with two or more people, you are going to get Netflix for free now. So Netflix, mm. trying to get on your phones, get everyone in for free. Uh, back to the email from Wes Cranford, Yank from Down Under. He says, hi, all. Good show last week. But hey, Ruggs teased he was going to talk about Batman Harley film. I'd be curious what his thoughts are, but he spaced it. Too many hits of whatever it is a puppet hits. Lint in a vapor, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Anthony, check out Australian Rules Football, AFL. It's pretty cool. Only sport down here I like. Rugby bores me, and cricket is awful. Just too long, though. Baseball fans rugby may like it. Oh, they don't rugby. First of all, Wes, I got to thank you for writing in because 
Ruggs did talk about that. It was in the post show, and I had forgot to post the post show until he wrote this. So thank you for reminding me. And he wrote back. He's like, oh, I heard it on the post show. So if you want to hear that, I was wondering if anybody would catch that because you did say you were going to talk about it. And then you're going to have to pay for it now. Pay for it on the Patreon. You never let me talk about it. I did not. We just (laughs) carried on. Anthony, do you know anything about Australian rules football? Not that much. I know that to the naked eye, it looks kind of like rugby. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I've seen it once or twice on screen, and it looks to me similar to rugby, but no, not really. It's played. It doesn't interest you at all. It's played in a big circle, I guess. Like, Does it interest The field me? is a circle. I've heard it's pretty crazy. I remember watching some videos. Uh, I mean, it. I can appreciate the athleticism on display, and I would, I would like to pull up a – I would like to – do a little more research before I speak about something I know nothing about, unlike uh, you, Imran. Oh, all right. I'll just make some <laughs> shit up. <laughs> Best football ever. It's just played in Australia. Everyone check out Australian Bills <laughs> football. It's not, I think of like the, that, uh, the New Zealand All Blacks. That's rugby, though, isn't it? Those guys are awesome. Those, yeah, those guys, rugby. Those guys are like the real life okay, Dothraki. I, I, I've pulled up uh, just a quick sheet. Um, Aussie rules football. Yeah, you're right. Oval shaped. Football is like a little, like a red sort of thing. Okay. Just in Australia. And eh, this is boring. It's a lot. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's boring. It's sports. I'm already bored. Last <laughs> this thing <is> boring. <laughs> before we peace out, uh, cr- listener, Chris Williams, who we mentioned earlier on our Facebook group that you can find at jockanerd.com slash community. He posted pictures of these red balloons tied to crates. That's funny. Are you guys uh, excited about it at all? Does this pique your interest? You're going to go see it. I heard it's really fucking scary. I'll watch it. I, uh, my friends are thinking about doing like where we all go and see it like at a midnight. Yeah. So if we can rally that, I'll go watch it. Let's throw up the, uh, the, the Rotten Tomatoes. I have it up. Okay. What is it? For it. Yeah. We've got, according to the tomato meter, yeah. 89%. Oh, snap. It's not so bad. 89% of oh. liked it. A- aver- but average we're rating? down to the average rating. Uh huh. 7.1. So still solid. Okay, still just solid. Just not an eighty nine percent. Not a not a high eighty. So those, I guess, and that's the, out of one hundred forty two reviews. Uh, that's a lot of reviews, huh? Yeah. Wow. I've heard. Uh, yeah, I've heard that it's really than average. Fucking yeah. scary. Yeah, I, so. At this point, I mean, horror. Yeah. If you can make a better than average horror movie, I mean, most horror movies this, these days are garbage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. They, they, the ones that try too hard. Uh, those. So and it is, you know, Stephen King. Yeah. Got a, got a history. I remember it the TV, TV show yep. well. I think I've read the book also, and it's uh, it's great shit. So, have you guys watched any recent horror movies? Not really. Fuck no. I watched It Follows. I on heard Netflix. that's good. Was it good? Uh, it was all right. <laughs> but you know what it was? It was like to me, it was like very well shot, like amazingly shot. Yeah, it was acted decently. But at the end of the day, it was fucking boring. And not a lot was happening, and I wasn't really scared. I heard Conjuring 2 is also very good. In terms the of Conjuring that. was, I saw that, and that was pretty scary. So those red balloons that people are seeing tied around, you would think this is some smart viral marketing by the studio. Right, guys? Like You're like, let's tie some red balloons. Uh, Chris Williams sent me this link. <laughs> It's a bunch of fucking seventeen-year-old girls. Uh, this is that. What this is from a story. Check out the name of this town in Pennsylvania. It's called Littitz. L i t i Littitz. Yeah, L i t i t z. Littitz, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's my kind of town, right? Uh, a bunch of girls, sixteen and seventeen-year-old girls. They were doing a prank, and they tied these red balloons to grates. They tied one by the Littitz Borough Police Department and the police department freaked out and posted to so- social media. They're like, please don't do this. This is scaring us. I just thought it was funny. And the kids, the girls didn't think it was going to go viral like it did. But that's just in one town. Apparently this is happening in other towns. So I think it's just people tying red balloons. Remember like the scary clown thing that people were hiding in the woods? Yeah, with that you? was like yeah. a year ago uh, before this movie was even like mentioned. I remember that. That was weird. That's weird as but fuck. But that's all. I can't. I'm going to drive through Littitz, Pennsylvania. Hey, man, you, people I, think puppets are scary. <laughs> are you guys aware of the, it's using the term lit to describe things? Yeah, it's lit, yo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Or then. to describe. That, 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 that means it's really saturated pop culture. Uh, that means it's already dead. It. Yeah, also, it's already dead. another use of the word is, yo, I'm lit, bro. As I'm, I was completely lit this whole podcast. What does no, that it, mean? It's the, no, that's the same oh. same thing. Okay. Well, it, be, well you being lit means yeah. like you were just 
fucking high probably on something. It was on fire. Where, where was like you, if Anthony was like, yo, is that Godzilla Fest? And it was lit. It was yeah. lit. Whereas, <laughs> I, whereas if I use it like that, that yeah. means like You're lying. it was fucking crazy. <laughs> like it was lying. the wildest shit. It, everyone was on fire. Words people never have uttered. Yo, G yeah. Fest was lit this year. Yeah, Nobody ever says that. <laughs> says no one. No, I, I, you know what? I think the the people that went to G Fest probably do think it was lit. Oh, they think it was. Lit. Oh yeah, like that. Like <laughs> are that deep in it. But they wouldn't. Like, they that was wouldn't. The they don't talk like ever. that. Maybe they do. No, they wouldn't say it. They they wouldn't say it, or they would use it incorrectly. Yo, how's G Fest? It was lit, bro. <laughs> You're never gonna hear that. <laughs> You're never gonna hear you, you can yeah. thank the rapper uh, Travis Scott for doing the It's Lit. Oh, that's who we have to thank? Yeah. Uh, he Travis coined the phrase. Scott. Coined it, yep. I was like a fucking... He, he, you would hear his songs and he'd be like, It's lit! In the background. <laughs> it's like this. Talking nerd! It's lit! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, you guys, check out a couple other shows I'm on. I've talked about trivia geeks and sketching comedy. One note... If you have been listening to Trivia Geeks, if you're subscribed, you are going to have to resubscribe. There's a oh, new no. feed. They changed the name. There were some issues in the back end. They had to make a new feed. You search for, and I'll put a link in the show notes, just search for Trivia Geeks Live is the new name. It's got two really hilarious episodes up there right now with me as the host of a really ridiculous trivia podcast. Rugs, where can the listener find you? You can find me on Twitter at Really Rug Boy. That's right. As always, That's where I am. leave us a rating and a reviewing on the Apple Podcasts. Th- subscribe to the show. Tell a friend. Spread the geekery in IRL. Grab their phone. Subscribe them. Give them one of these. Chuck and nerd. All quiet, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. We'll peep you next time. <laughs> I'm getting lit, bro. Lit AF, RN. Lit. Oh, you can talk entirely in letters. Yes. BRB lit AF, RN. That, make, that makes no sense. All day, son. <laughs> getting lit all day. I got your hand off my penis. Seems unhelpful. Jogging nerd. Shut up, Joplin. We're podcasting.